Hello students, welcome back uh, for the last lesson in chapter 7 where we're talking about cells. Uh, in this section we're going to be talking about homeostasis and cells. This is going to be a real quick lesson. Uh, I actually didn't write the key terms or objectives today, but there's not many so you should not miss them. Okay, so starting off, right, we're going to start talking about homeostasis and cells. And to talk about that, we're going to need to talk about living organisms. Got a little whited out there, but that's okay. All right, and if we see, we have two living organisms here, right? We have here an amoeba, okay, and we have a hippo. Hopefully you all know what a hippo is. Uh, if you don't know what an amoeba is, right, it's a one-celled organism that eats little things, move around, it's one cell, right? And if we think way back to the beginning of the year here, uh, we've talked about this before in saying that while these two animals or organisms are completely different, right, this amoeba versus this hippo, right, they both share all the characteristics of life because they're both living things, okay? So even though this hippo has is a completely different multicellular organism with all different organs, organ systems, and this guy isn't, they both are very similar in the fact that they're both alive, okay? And if we remember, right, we have a couple characteristics of living things. They're all made of cell. This guy is one cell. This guy has millions of cells, right? Uh, they both obtain these energy, okay? He's eating something right here. This hippo is going to eat grass and stuff. They grow and develop, right? This amoeba started small, grew bigger. This used to be a little baby hippopotamus. They reproduce, right? This guy will make two new amoebas. This guy will have baby hippos. And they respond to their environment, okay? If it gets really hot, he's going to go in the water. If it gets really acidic where this amoeba is hanging out, he's going to move. And finally, they evolve, right? Over long, long periods of time, they evolve into new organisms, okay? So it's important to remember that both unicellular or one celled and multicellular like a hippo right with many cells uh, both follow characteristics of life okay they are living organisms um, and we're revisiting a term that we talked about here right just like other living things unicellular organisms must achieve a state called homeostasis okay and we talked about this as one of the characteristics of life right homeostasis when we say that we're saying it means same state, okay? So an organism, whether it's one cell or many cells like the hippo, needs to maintain a relatively constant internal and external physical and chemical conditions, okay? It needs to stay relatively the same uh, within an organism. If something outside the organism, like acid out here, is going to cause that organism to change, it needs to do something and respond. Otherwise, it will no longer maintain homeostasis, and it's not going to survive, okay? So it's really crucial for all organisms to maintain homeostasis. And like we said, unicellular organisms still maintain homeostasis, but they have to do it all on their own within one cell, okay? That's really important thing to remember here is that unicellular organisms maintain that homeostasis, uh, but they need to be able to be self-sufficient, okay? Do everything on their own. Uh, with just one cell, okay? And this is very different than, than multicellular organisms, right? Where we begin to talk about cell specialization, okay? So multicellular organisms are cells that have more than one cell. So everything up from little tiny lizards to humans and elephants and hippos, right? Multicellular organisms need their different parts to work together, okay? And it's a good way to think about it, like a baseball team, right? If you were just one person here, there's no way you could win a baseball game. You need to have all nine positions. You need to have a pitcher to pitch the ball. You need to have a catcher to catch it. You need guys on all the bases, right, uh, to play the bases and a shortstop. You need outfielders if the ball goes along, okay? All these different parts need to be able to come and work together for this team to win, okay? And uh, multicellular organisms work in exactly the same way. Okay, if they don't work together, they're not going to survive. Whereas a unicellular organism, right, it's only one cell. So he's going to have to do it on his own anyways. Okay. Um, and really, right, so when we say the different parts work together, we're talking about different parts, different cells in an organism. Okay. We have two different cells here. Here we have a neuron or a nerve cell, right, which fires all your neurons from your fingers up to your brain. And here we have a cell, uh, a cross section of cells from the trachea, which is your windpipe, right, in your throat where you breathe through, okay? Uh, and these are just great examples of two different types of cells and really a main concept here in cell specialization. And this concept uh, is that different cells, okay, different cells, have different 
uh, shapes, okay? And different shapes allow different functions, right? And similar to like we said with a protein, right? A shape determines function, okay? So in multicellular organisms, all their different parts need to work together, okay? And all these different parts have different shapes, okay? And their shapes determine their function, right? These trachea shells are, cells are shaped specifically to allow air through and to move air up and down, okay? Whereas this neuron is specifically shaped to receive signals up here by the dendrites and send signals through an axon, okay? So every cell in a multicellular organism has a different shape and a different function, okay? So we're going to start talking about levels of organization here, right? And basically this means how do we then get from this one cell, okay, one human cell, one set of DNA, one set of organelles, all that jazz, into a multicellular human being like this human, okay? There's different ways we can classify everything in between this one cell and a full human, okay? Uh, and these are the levels of organization, okay, uh, of cells, okay? The first one we have, obviously, is a cell, right? If we think back to our um, characteristics of life, right, every organism is made of cells. So you have to have at least one cell, and we're talking about multicellular, so we have many cells. So the smallest level we could have in a multicellular organism is a cell, right? This is one um, muscle cell here, right? Smooth muscle that's through your digestive tract, okay? We could have all different types of muscle. We could have muscle cells, we could have neuron cells, we could have cardiac muscle cells, okay? We could have epithelial cells. There's all different types of cells found in the human body. But the first level, okay, and most basic is a cell. The second level of organization is a tissue, okay? And tissues are made up of many types of the same cell, okay? So tissues are made up of many types of the same cell. So here we could have some smooth muscle tissue, and this would just be like a little piece, a little flap, a section maybe uh, of your stomach or your small intestine, okay? There's many, many, many smooth muscle cells here together. The next level, the third level we have is organs, okay? Uh, and organs are many of different types of tissues that come together. All right, so here we have a stomach, right? In this stomach, there's some small smooth muscle tissue. There's also uh, like stomach tissue, digestive tissue, epithelial tissue that lets out enzymes. So stomachs, right, would be an organ. Uh, and organs are made up of different tissues, okay? And you can think about other organs as well, right? You could say your lungs, your brains, your heart, right? There's all different types of tissues in these organs. And then finally, the last level of organization we have is a system, okay? Uh, a system is made up of many different organs, okay? So the digestive system, right? It starts with your oropharynx here. You have your mouth, your tongue, your esophagus coming down into your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, uh, and then finally out through your rectum and anus. We have liver, gallbladder. All these organisms come together to make a an organ system, right? So it's really important to remember that of these levels of organization, they work logically in order, right? We start from one, many of one make up the next. So cells to tissues, many tissues to organs, many organs to organ systems, all right? And finally, the last part, piece of this lesson here is that when we have all these different tissues, all these different cells, okay, uh, that are going to be working together for a common function, right? All these different smooth muscle cells working to allow a stomach to function, these cells need to be able to communicate somehow, all right? This is a really a key point here uh, of the difference between multicellular versus unicellular life, right? Unicellular life, it's one cell, so he doesn't have to talk to anybody. Whereas with multicellular life, all, okay, all uh, of our cells need to be in contact with one another so that our body can function, right? Go back to our baseball example. Imagine a team trying to win a game if the pitcher didn't tell the catcher when he was going to throw the ball, right? Or the first baseman didn't tell, uh, you know, the pitcher that he was going to going to go and catch the ball and the pitcher needed to cover, right? If the team didn't communicate, it wouldn't win. Same thing. If the cells in your body don't communicate, they don't win. Think about when you have to go for a run, right? Think about all the different tissues and organs that you're using here, right? Your brain is thinking about what you're doing. It's sending signals down to your legs and your arms and your feet to begin moving, which then talk to the muscle cells, right? And the muscle cells 
start to contract your muscles here to move your legs up and down and then it's sending signals as well to your digestive system to cease digestion so that you can focus on running okay which is sending muscle or signals then to your respiratory system which is saying breathe faster to get more oxygen to run harder right all these systems need to be able to communicate and they do that on a cellular level right that's important to know that communication happens on a cellular level cool so what does this mean for us right in terms of cells communicating on a cellular level right a key term here that we should know is that cells have what are called receptors okay and a receptor uh, is basically a part of a cell on the cell membrane that's going to receive a chemical signal uh, or a signal from so something outside of the cell okay so a receptor is something that receives a signal from outside of the cell right an example would be an insulin receptor right uh, which tests your blood sugar level okay it tests if there how much sugar is in your blood and if you need to secrete insulin okay we have all different types of receptors some might receive different chemicals some of them might be pressure sensors or receptors all right so cells communicate through receptors and they send signals to one another by allowing cells to communicate our body can function as one whole unit and that's what allows multicellular life to exist and thrive cool all right that's the end uh i know it was a quick one but go through review that vocab if you have any questions feel free to email me ctota or you can always tweet at me at mr tota 13. all right kids hope you had a good one and uh finish this up and be ready for tomorrow peace out